Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Hope you're doing well today. Happy Monday, everyone. It is the start of the week. I hope you are having a great start. I hope you had a great weekend as well. I certainly did. Um, the topic for today, I'm going to discuss what watches I would buy if I had to buy one watch in 2020. I think this is a good way of starting the year. Um, I'm going to give you my thoughts on what I think the best watch would be for me to enjoy um, over the 2020 uh, period. Um, I'm going to have a couple categories because it's kind of hard to pick one specific watch, um, but that's going to be the topic for today. Also, I would love to know what watch you are looking to purchase in 2020 or a watch that you hopefully can save up to, for in order to enjoy on your wrist. Um, so if you are about to purchase a watch or you're saving up for a watch, put that in the comment section. I would love to know what watch you're kind of looking at because it might give some other people ideas of what watches they might want to buy. Um, so I was kind of, you know, wondering about... Um, what watches I wanted to purchase. And obviously, you know, the markets are kind of changing when it comes to buying watches, um, especially with, you know, um, the economic backdrop that is um, the, the global economy right now. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see what watches people are going to end up purchasing. Um, I don't think my decisions on what watches I would want to purchase in 2020 should be based off of the global economy. I think it should be based off of what I love because that is my number one rule when it comes to buying watches. Um, so what I did is I came up with four categories <clears throat> and four watches for each of those categories, um, or one watch for each of those categories. Um, the categories that I chose were, were an everyday watch, a chronograph, a diver, and then a dress watch. Um, this is basically allowing me to give my opinion on if you are looking to buy an everyday watch, this is what you should buy. If you're looking to buy a diver, this is what you should buy or what I would end up buying. Um, so that's kind of how I, I laid out this video today. So I guess I'll dive right into it. Um, the first watch that I would recommend, and this is going to be the everyday watch, and I actually made a video on this. Ironically, it got a, um, got a lot of hate. <laughs> uh, oh, I, before I even start this, um, I do not have any of these watches in my possession. If you are looking for a video where people have these watches, this is not the video for you. I'm purely um, just kind of giving my opinion on what I would want to buy. So please do not hate this video. Um, so the, the everyday watch that uh, that I would end up purchasing in 2020 is uh, a video I made. A, I made a video about this watch. Um, the watch is the Longines Master Collection Moon Phase. Um, the reference is the uh, L2909.4. Um, this watch is, um, I think, one of the best entry-level kind of luxury watches that you can possibly buy. I think Longines is a really great place and a good start point for, for that. Um, I really love the Moonface complication. I think it's extremely romantic and kind of just put, takes me back to kind of a classical time of watchmaking for some reason. Even though it's probably one of the most useless um, complications, I still really love it. So, um, like I said, it's the reference L2909.4. Um, this watch is 40, mil 40 millimeters in diameter. It's running off the caliber 899, which is an ETA-based movement. So it's not like you're getting um, extreme in-house watchmaking, but still a robust movement that is going to end up working. Um, it, it's got a 64-hour power reserve, so it's plenty of power reserve that you can wear it over, you know, multiple days. Um, it has the hours, minutes, seconds, date, and moon phase complication. There are a couple variations of this watch. There's a, there's a blue dial with some diamond hour markers, but because I want to wear this as a everyday watch, I think I'd end up going with the silver barley coin dial. Um, just a simple, you know, um, very simple watch. Nothing, nothing too fancy. The dial is very, very clean. Um, the kind of white silver color of it's going to stand out. So it's kind of, kind of has a little bit of a pop. It's not just like a black dial where it's a little bit more understated. Um, I really like this watch one because of the moon face complication. As I said, it's one of the, my favorite complications. I think it's extremely romantic. Um, also, this watch is large enough that it's legible. And also the fact that it's 40 millimeters means it's going to sit on the wrist. You know, it's going to have some presence on the wrist. So um, it's going to make it a little bit more sporty, a little bit more everyday, but it still has those classic feels when it comes to the moon face complication. So I think this is a really cool everyday watch and definitely one that, that I would buy in 2020. So that's the first category. The second category is the chronograph. Um, obviously for this money is no object. Um, so this chronograph, uh, the, for the chronograph category, I would go with the Bulgari Octophonismo Chronograph GMT. This is, I chose this watch simply because of the amount of records that it breaks and just the ingenuity that kind of went into this watch. So if you aren't really familiar with this watch, it's got an ultra thin movement um, and 
this was kind of the first Bulgari's kind of like competing with companies like Piaget, um, Automos Piguet, uh, Igle Coultre, and they developed their caliber BVL 318 for this watch. It's basically an ultra thin chronograph movement, which is an extremely hard thing to do when, when it comes to watchmaking. Um, it only it measures 3.3 millimeters um, in, in height, so it's an extremely thin movement. And this is actually the thinnest um, uh, chronograph movement ever produced. It was previously held by the Piaget 1180, but this is uh, this kind of took the, the record away from them. I think they had this record for like something like 32 years or 30 or 20, 20 years, something like that. Um, so again, you've got a really cool record in this watch. Um, I also like the fact that the case is kind of unique. It's definitely one of the watches that's come out and kind of created its own little env <clears throat> little environment that I really like. It's it's not like your t the typical watches you're gonna end up seeing people wear. It is does measure 42 millimeters, so it is quite wide, but um, again, I think I would buy this watch one because of how amazing this caliber is, how hard it was to produce, but also because the chronograph is extremely well, well made and the fact that it, you're probably not gonna see this on a lot of people's wrists. So that's the uh, chronograph I would choose, um, the Bulgari Octophonismo Chronograph GMT. Then going into the diver uh, category, I would, the watch that I would buy in 2020 is the Alanganzuna Odyssey. As I said previously, money is no object. Um, this is, if you aren't familiar, I did make a video on this watch. It's the first Lange Steel sports watch that was ever produced. Alang and Zuna actually said that they would never do something like this, but they ended up doing this. I like the fact that it's because it's an interesting design. It's very unique. Um, it does have those elements that kind of you can you can feel the elements that come that it might have from the you know Royal Oak uh, Nautilus um, that type of watch, but it does do it in a in a way that Alang and Zuna. It, it does speak to Alang and Zuna who they are. So I like the fact that it's a unique design. When it comes to Alang and Zuna, every single watch that comes out of that manufacturer is of extreme quality, and that's why I would go for the Alang and Zuna because I'm getting extreme quality with with that with this watch. I also love the kind of blue textured dial that you see in this watch. I think it's it's um, t textured dials is something that you can do really really poorly, but if you do it well, it really does um, make the watch even more special. So I really like the textured dial. This also has the in-house L155.1 uh, datagraph movement. So um, <laughs> again, extreme quality with the movements, extreme quality with the finishing of the movements, extremely high quality when it comes to the robustness of the movement too. And it has 120 meters of water resistance and I don't think I'm going to be diving any deeper than that. So uh, I would, I would I'd be totally satisfied with this. I think I chose this as the diver because it's kind of unique. It's a new release from Alangans and it's different than what they typically produce. <clears throat> I remember listening to an interview of um, the CEO of Alangans and he was saying, you know, a lot of Alangans and owners said, I want something that I can kind of wear every day. A steel sports watch is something that they were desiring. And I think this is a, this is a good watch. So I would buy the Alangans and Odyssey if I was looking for a diver in 2020. And then the last category is the dress watch and I actually had difficulty here <laughs> um, figuring out what dress watch I would want to buy in 2020 because of how wide this category is but I think I would go with some type of Grand Seiko and I want to lean on you guys here a little bit and figure out what Grand Seiko I should specifically get. I've kind of developed a lot of respect for Grand Seiko over the last year. Not that I didn't have respect previously, I just wasn't as knowledgeable with Grand Seiko and the watches that they produced. <clears throat> but I kind of gotten in, <clears throat> I've kind of gotten into them and they released some really beautiful watches <clears throat> in Basel world of last year I'm kind of excited to see what they do this year But I want to lean on you guys figure out what Grand Seiko I should look at I think some of the Grand Seikos were up um, for awards at uh, GPHG this last year, so <clears throat> they're definitely a brand to be known a brand that we need to spend a lot more time kind of appreciating so um, and I think um, by buying a Grand Seiko in 2020 as your dress watch. <clears throat> I think that really does um, give you an opportunity to explore them, appreciate them, find a watch that you love. Um, and just just love <laughs> how beautiful the, the actual watch is. So. Um, so those are basically the watches that I'd buy in 2020 if I was looking for those categories. I'll go over it quickly again. If I was looking for an everyday watch, I'd buy a Longines Master Collection Moon Phase, the white dial version. <clears throat> if I was looking for a chronograph, I'd buy the Bulgari Octo Finissimo Chronograph GMT, 
simply because of how thin it is, how unique it is as a, as a watch. Not something you're going to see on everyone's wrist and definitely moving the industry forward. If I was looking for a diver, I'd go with the Alangan Zona uh, Odysseus. And uh, simply because it is uh, not something you see that comes out of Alangan Zona. And then lastly, I would be looking at, if I was looking for a dress watch, I'd look for a Grand Seiko. I'm going to lean on you guys here. Put it in the comment section below which Grand Seiko I should purchase. Um, it'd be helpful for me too. So um, if you guys have made it this far and you haven't already, um, be sure to smash that like button for us. We say it every video. It really, really does help us out. It helps get our content out to other watch lovers. Also, if you are new to the channel, we create videos about watches. So if you like watches, you should probably hit the subscribe button as well right now. If you're hovering over that like button, subscribe button's really close as well. Um, also check out our videos. We did do one on the Longines Master Collection Moon Phase. We did one on the Alain and Zinner Odysseus. So if you want more information on each of those watches, be sure to check them out on our channel. And with that said, guys, hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.